what I'll do is I'm going to kick things off just by talking about a, an amazing announcement that we, we just put out about an hour ago, which is the Avalanche Ambassador DAO program. So just to give everybody a little TLDR, you know, we've been having a lot of discussions with uh, probably folks here in this room and other people that have been active on Avalanche for some time, even since kind of the beginning, and just figuring out ways that uh, people wanted to help expand the ecosystem further, whether that's hosting in real life meetups or hackathons or, you know, watching videos and creating content or helping projects with tasks that they might have. And, and there's a lot of folks that have been so active in the community, but may also be looking to start their journey into, into a Web3 career. And so the program here will uh, kind of have uh, various tiers, but really the ambassadors are going to be a group of people run by a DAO that are going to have the opportunity to tap into funds to host local meetups in their in their different cities across the world, create content um, that helps kind of showcase the technology and showcase all the awesome things that are happening across the ecosystem. And it'll you know it'll be a really great working group that's run by uh, a couple key leaders, and people will have the opportunity to mo move up into those different tiers of ambassadors. Um, and it's you know you'll work clo work closely with with those running the DAO, but also with the Avalabs team. Um, so you'll you'll definitely get even further insight into uh, what's being built, how things work, and how we're looking to expand uh, what's being built on the network. Um, so if you check out the the post here at the top, there's there's some information in the thread, and there's a landing page there. If you go to avax.network backslash ambassadors, uh, there's an application link in there too, and there's an official application that you got to go through because we're gonna. Um, bringing this first cohort of, of people to to start building things out, and um, the there's going to be kind of a, a senate of people that are going to run the multi sig for the DAO, and, and eventually it's going to spin off and become its own thing that's run by the community and, and not really tied to, to Ab Labs at all. Um, and, and various folks have been asking, like you know, what, what 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 could people get out of it, and what's in it for for the ambassadors? So. Obviously, there's there's various ways that you can kind of have first access to things, um, learn a lot more about the inner workings of the technology, uh, but there's also going to be cool opportunities. There's going to be a lot of avalanche projects that drop in like kind of exclusive private bounties for you know people that want to help some of the projects build certain things or do research or even kind of jump in and help. Uh, on the developer side, so you'll get first access to, to bounties. Uh, there'll be all, obviously like cool, you know, free merch, and then all active ambassadors that are a part of the program. And if they're active for a few months leading up to the fall, will actually get a free ticket to Avalanche Summit. So um, if you're someone that's just already, you know, someone really proud of what's being built on Avalanche and evangelizing the network, uh, this is a really cool opportunity for you. So. We can uh, talk more about that if anybody has questions, uh, but there's some information here at the top. So just wanted to get things started with that because I would imagine there's folks in here that join this space as frequently or uh, engage with us that um, have been looking for an opportunity like this. So feel free to uh, come up later on and, and drop some questions if you have them. But uh, yeah, let's get into some more uh, quick updates. I think I think Hodel and, all, Hodel and I are going to be holding down the floor today. So um, Hodel, why don't you uh, share any exciting things that are happening in the culture and maybe the gaming space as well. Sure. Yeah, I'll give your voice a break. Um, this happened after last in the labs. Uh, so I guess it's technically news if you haven't, if all you listen to is in the labs. But Avisan Season 2 was announced. We're doing a Season 2 for artists, uh, the Artists in Residence program. Applications are open now through March 31st. And I'll just answer some of the, the questions we've been getting. Who can apply? Anybody, any artist can apply. If you've never had experience with blockchain, that's awesome. Come on in, we'll teach you. Uh, if you're coming from another chain, yes, please. We want to expose uh, the Avalanche ecosystem to you and, and all that it has to offer. And of course, if you are Avalanche native artist and you've been here for a long time, we want to see your applications as well. And we'll get a nice mix of, of students from all those backgrounds, hopefully. Uh, another question we got is who are the mentors? We cannot, I can't say yet, but there are, there's still some flexibility there. So if we see a lot of applications from a certain discipline, uh, then I think that we'll look to secure an appropriate mentor for that. Um, so we do have some uh, mentors secured already, but there is room for uh, an additional mentor or two if uh, we see like, oh, we've, we've got a lot of AI applications. Let's go get a mentor that specializes in that. Um, 
So that's about all I can say about the mentors right now. We'll have separate announcements for that uh, when we're ready to tell you. Uh, another question we got were, can the previous Avison students apply? Yes, uh, absolutely. I will say, I'm sure that preference is going to be given to students who haven't been through the program yet. But as I said to other Avison artists that were interested, yeah, go ahead and apply. It, it can't hurt. Uh, and then also maybe you have a, a new iteration on your project or some fantastic idea that's just so overwhelmingly great that our mentors can't help but select you. But I, I think that preference will be given to, to new students. Um, so yeah, Avison season two, please get in there, apply. I'm sure that Kyle's already got it up in the Jumbotron. Uh, next one I think has already been uh, spoiled a little bit by the Jumbotron, but uh, let's start with the, the Paris Creator House. We had an amazing event. Uh, I'm still going through content from it, and I'll be releasing it over the next couple weeks, but we had max capacity attendance. Over 250 people came through between 1 p.m. and 7 p.m. to hit the various workshops and, and activations, and uh, you know, I'm biased, but it seemed like one of the best uh, side events at NFT Paris. It was a, a really great time, and I apologize if you were there and I didn't get to meet you because I was running from talk to talk to activation to activation, and I really didn't get a chance to say hello to anybody. Uh, so that stinks. But hopefully that will be different in New York. So going on to that news, uh, New York Creator House, Avalanche Creator House New York was announced as well, and registrations are now open. So please sign up and join us if you can. If you missed out on Paris, this is going to be your opportunity to see something uh, really, really cool uh, just outside of NFT NYC. Uh, so it's also, I believe, pretty going to be pretty close to that uh, venue, NFT NYC, just a quick walk. So uh, there's no excuse not to get your registration in and, and maybe come pay us a visit. Uh, on the gaming side, I know that uh, Shrapnel's having another one of their competitions, so you have to have a... Uh, uh, extraction pack, I believe, to, to download the game and, and play, but that is happening this weekend as well. STX 1.2 or 1.3, I forget what we're up to. Um, and then, uh, I need to catch up more on my other gaming stuff because I've been 100% focused Paris. So, uh, you talk now, Kyle. <laughs> yeah. No, it was great. Uh, and, uh, and just, man, I'm so excited for Avison season two. It's just, uh, hearing about the experiences uh afterwards of those that went through the program and then finally released their art like i think there's so much uh cool stuff that can come out of that i'm excited to hear who the mentors are and stuff so yeah check that out if you're an artist here uh go ahead and apply um and one more thing i'll bring up too um we uh announced this week that there's a a, a group called um insomnia labs and they have this product called loyalty plus and it's it's something that exists in web 2 as well but uh, they're now leveraging the Avalanche uh, subnet to be able to offer brands and enterprises or, you know, kind of any company of any size to build out like a loyalty program that's built on chain. Um, so you can really take advantage of like uh, these personalized mechanics, um, you know, using like blockchain based identity systems, and then also offering like a lot of traceability and transparency and the scarcity of these rewards too. So taking a, uh, the loyalty, you know, model and going even a step further. And they've worked with major, major brands in the past. For, I think L'Oreal and some of the big CPGs and uh, beverage brands and things like that. So, um, yeah, it's re really cool to see how enterprises are uh, foraying into Web3 and, and seeing the power of, like, the customizability and um, the scalability of Avalanche. So, yeah, you can get some more information there at the top. Uh, and there's, there's lots of other stuff going on. Um, one more thing, too, just for everybody here that is a validator or a staker through, uh, to stake natively on, on the Avalanche network. Um, next week, the 6th, is when the proposed Durango network upgrade is going to go live. And Durango is going to introduce a whole uh, feature set of different functionalities, including Avalanche warp messaging, which then opens up the floodgates for people to build on Teleporter. And we'll get into uh, Teleporter a lot more later, too. But um, it's also introducing a new permissionless transaction type that's in the code. So it's going to uh, the wallet.avax.network, the, the uh, current web wallet, is no longer going to be working. And so that site will be taken down on March 6th. And so every uh, everybody that wants to stake Avalanche natively on the network uh, needs to use core stake. So make sure you're migrating over to that and um, 
on our socials and on our website, we have kind of a migration guide. So it's one more thing that we have, and next week's going to be really massive as as uh, Durango goes live um, and uh, an avalanche warp messaging and teleporter becomes available for developers. So we're probably actually going to do some spaces next week that are dedicated to, to those topics. And I know um, pa- Patrick O'Grady is going to be doing a whole presentation on teleporter once it's live. So lots to look forward to. Vibes are good. It's been a fun week. But yeah, let's jump into some questions. I know there's a couple people here that have uh, requested up uh, to to be a speaker. I'm going to ask, I'm going to bring Jay hug up first. Just as a reminder for those who want to come up and speak, um, some of our, you know, kind of guidelines is we don't talk at all about the markets or kind of token pricing or how specific tokens are moving up or down. Um, and we also just want to keep it kind of a, a shill free zone. So talking more about what's being built, what's exciting, what's happening and, uh, how people could, uh, support this growth. So Jay Hag, what's going on? Well, I am absolutely super stoked by the two uh, announcements from the last week and this week. One, that Avison Season 2 is coming. That's so wonderful for artists. I've got a chance to speak to a lot of those, those artists who have graduated, and I'm looking forward to seeing their artwork that will be coming out uh, it, you know, in the next couple of months. And then... Uh, also, the community DAO. That is like, so we've been doing AVAX PDX for the last two years. Um, and I think having a, a big, you know, pool of resources where that you're going to have a lot of, you know, influencers or people who are experienced in, in, uh, in events, you know, doing in real life uh, activations and then having, uh, you know, the ability for outside projects to come by and, and uh, to, to be able to engage with those people, know who on the Avalanche network that they can talk to if they need to get something done. All of that, I'm super ridiculously stoked about it. it like, it's like a, a great combination of both culture and, um, you know, the, the movers and the shakers, the people who get stuff done. I think both of those things that you guys are doing is just, it's got me with a permanent smile on my face for the last two weeks. Me too. And, and thank you for that. I, I appreciate um, the recognition of some of the important aspects that this could bring. I, I really love the idea of a new project that wants to build on Avalanche. And like, if you just come in, you may not know exactly who are the people that could help you navigate the ecosystem and maybe able to help you with some tech problems that you might be having. And now you kind of have like an automatic place that you can go to with. And, and we're looking to make this a, a really big group too. So we encourage everyone to apply because I think there's going to be a lot of opportunity there. But yeah, it's like that direct connection with the community versus having to rely on your own skill sets or something that Avalabs is helping you with. Um, and I think this is going to grow so far beyond what we even imagined it to be. Um, and so like even, even the leaders of that aren't uh, Avalabs like leaders and stuff too. So yeah, I, I'm excited about it too. And, and I, what, what gets me really excited is that there's just uh, so many opportunities opening up that the community can connect with each other and not um, so reliant on just like us making announcements and stuff too. So whether that's the community of AVAX Twitter account, you know, uh, all the uh, bounties and quests happening in discord, this DAO program, Avisons, like, uh, you know, there's the opportunities are endless. And I think uh, the next couple of weeks you're going to see even more and more of this. So yeah, I echo your sentiment completely. Uh, one, one quick question. I know that this might be a little bit out in the future, but so I, uh, if you guys haven't, if you guys are down there in the listener section and haven't followed the new AVAX community, I believe it's Av, AVAX, what is it? It's community, community of AVAX, AVAX Avalanche, right? Yeah, I'll, I'll pop a tweet up here at the top so people can see it. So that one is an Ava Labs official uh, within, with, within the organization <laughs> Twitter account. Um, are you guys going to have one specifically for the DAO? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. And actually, uh, we already have it locked in. We just wanted to get this initial information out first just so that folks could figure out what it is, what's its purpose, how they could apply. But there's going to be, uh, and we'll probably push it out soon here, is there's going to be an official Twitter account run by that DAO, so not run by Able Labs as an entity. And that'll be the place where uh, all the members can interact. People can see what, what the group is doing, see how the funds are being allocated for different events. Um, and there's like different uh, 
kind of criteria to move up to different levels of ambassador to. And one of the things that I think is really exciting is uh, one of the pillars of this effort is to integrate Avalanche into more universities. So going into various universities to help them spin up blockchain clubs or host workshops or hackathons for students. Uh, we're seeing a lot of great talent come out of these university hackathons and just, you know, there, there's folks here that maybe haven't been in the industry very long, so maybe they're not quite like a maxi for certain things. They just want to build really cool tech, and so they see things like Hyper SDK, where they're like, oh, this is something brand new that I want to build with. And so we're going to be really focusing on that pillar, which is integrating Avalanche and just blockchain as a whole into more universities. So uh, there'll be information on that Twitter account where you can kind of see what events have been hosting, what workshops are coming up. But that's a great question, and I think that's exactly why we're doing it. I also think that uh, the university angle as well, not only are you know, you're getting some of the best talent across all nations by going to universities and, and being able to give them, you know, like the uh, supplies and know-how and everything that comes with like a person from the DAO going there and teaching or, or spinning up their blockchain club. Um, but also, you know, I, I think of it like the, uh, what is it, the Red Bull marketing angle where that uh, Red Bull... Yeah, like college, and college ambassadors. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I was I was very familiar with that when I was in college. That's how they all got big. That's how Monster got big. That's how you know Rockstar. If y'all remember Rockstar, yeah. This is these are places where there's new talent, people just getting into the industry, just figuring these things out. And these people are digital natives, and so they already know how to navigate these different platforms. And I think it's a big opportunity. The other thing, too, is that the use case for blockchain technology is so broad that, like, it doesn't even have to be like, oh, I'm, a, I'm in the computer science department and blah, blah, blah. You could also be an artist minting NFTs and that those types of blockchain clubs could be, you know, established from, from that angle or maybe you're in marketing or what have you. I think that it's, it's, it's just an absolutely wonderful thing to be, you know, uh, showcasing not only those, those new folks coming into the ecosystem, but also, like, giving them, them those two. It's so fun. Yeah, yeah, I I agree. Yeah, you could be uh, interested in business development, or you know, uh, you could be interested in just like startup and entrepreneurship. And like, there's yeah, the use cases are endless for sure. And yeah, I think people first focus on like what developers can do, but there's there's a wide wide space there to build in. So I man, I echo everything, and I think uh, it's great that you've kind of uh, seen what the purpose of this is and what the outcomes could possibly be. And I think that's exactly how we intended it to, to showcase what this could become. And uh, one of the conversations we had a lot internally was like, this doesn't have to be perfect when we first launch it. It just needs to be something where people can get involved in, and build it and expand it and figure out the best way to take it. So now you said that there's going to be a couple of tiers. How many tiers will there be? So right now there's three ambassador tiers. So there's like just kind of the initial ambassador and then there's like a, a senior ambassador, which uh, probably has more skill sets that they can offer to different projects or uh, they've done certain things like hosted these university events. Those will be tiers that you kind of can do things to get to. And then there's kind of like an elite ambassador tier. Um, we've kind of, we've kind of denominated them as like a, one way is that kind of like defenders of the network too, like when, when certain things that we want to spread or certain things that come up that we really want to garner more reach and awareness for. These are people that have influence and uh, we want to help people build their own influence uh, on platforms like Twitter and stuff too. So, And then there's um, kind of a head group that, that's called the Senate, which is going to be an expanding group of the actual leaders of the DAO that are on the multi-sig and stuff too. And that'll be project leads uh we'll announce um who that first cohort is um and i think it's five right now i think four of them are ecosystem project leads um and then there's like a, a level called cadet which is basically like uh you're not quite an ambassador yet but it's how you can like learn things and how you can learn how to navigate the, the, the community and so there will be kind of like a training down a little bit for ambassadors too um and so those those levels are listed out in the in the blog that we put out as well as the, the landing page that's so great. And uh, uh, so with the landing page, will there be like a whole, I know that you guys on the official Ava Labs um, site have a lot of like ecosystem stuff over there. Will there be like a long write-up for people to read uh, on the official? 
Yeah. Yeah. So if you go to the landing page, there's also a, um, uh, what's called the Dow manual and it's a get book link that has like a fully extensive breakdown of like what these tiers look like, what's the flow of information, like what's the communication like in discord. Um, it's all broken down in super detail in that, uh, Get book link, which is the Dow manual. You'll find that in the blog and in the landing page. I think something else that people would be pretty excited for as well is that the Dow also will have funds allocated to online activities, correct? Yeah, online activities and uh, content creation. So, yeah. Well, yeah, I, there's obviously going to be people that are perfect for this program that don't necessarily live in a place where they could get an, uh, an event meetup started or um, they might not be great at hosting events or that's not necessarily their forte. There's there's going to be a lot of online opportunities to, to create content, to, um, you know, create, you know, host spaces and do a bunch of things that just also help expand the word of Avalanche. And then I'm guessing that uh, that the funds will be distributed to the folks who are the trusted uh, ambassadors via the Avalanche blockchain um, as, a, as a transaction, I would guess, correct? Correct. Yes, the DAO will hold the funds and it'll be all voted upon and distributed based on the ambassadors applying for their events and the DAO distributing that. So yeah, it'll be very democratic and all on chain. And we're working with some ecosystem partners to to house the infrastructure for this. So part of uh, the program is the accumulation of what's called XP points. And these XP points will be distributed for certain actions you take, showcase your activity, you know, who's doing what. And I, uh, I think like packed, packed, uh, packed world, is going to be housing a lot of the infrastructure for that element for like the point system. So even just, you know, elevating native OG ecosystem projects that could, be a, a core piece of this um, is is what we're doing. And yeah, you're right. The, the funds will be distributed and you'll see it happen on the network. Well, I am super stoked. I wanted to come up here and just give you guys a bunch of flowers for both the new Amazon uh, uh, season two, as well as this community announcement as of this morning. I just got done working out. I'm going to go take a shower. If you guys yeah. aren't doing exercise, it's good for the mind. And oh, my gosh. Body, yeah. Definitely do it as well. Um, but I'm going to hop down to listener, and thank you so much for having me up. Yeah, man. I appreciate you coming up. Amazing questions, and I think uh, you even helped me get some of the other info out that we need to explain because there's a lot of intricacies and nuance to this. But, yeah, hopefully uh, we shared enough information, and hopefully the links and stuff that we shared – have everything you need to know, but more to come, more to come, lots, lots more to come. Follow the community on AVAX, community of AVAX channel to, to really see the day-to-day -day of, of what's happening there. Awesome. Thanks, Jay. Uh, if anybody else has any questions, call, I saw like uh, somewhere, did you have one more? I saw you. Okay. Uh, if you have any questions, pop on up here, a request to be up. I saw one or two that were requesting and then they popped down. Oh, we waiting. Um, uh, might as well put in some plugs for uh, the gaming channel is doing in a spaces right after this at uh, 1 p.m. Eastern with Ava Kongs, uh, or sorry, Rumble Kongs. Rumble Kongs, not Ava Kongs. Rumble Kongs are the, uh, it's like the mobile basketball game that's sort of casual, sort of in the style of NBA Jam, has a real nostalgia feel to it. They're about to start their playtest, or they had their first playtest already. And they're about to get into their second uh, beta play test soon. So uh, we were going to talk with them last Friday. That got postponed. So talking with them right after this 1 p.m. Eastern with the Rumble Kongs. Very, very cool looking game. Yeah, I uh, dropped the link up here at the top for anybody that wants to join us after this. Super cool. I, I, I love Rumble Kongs. And I love that they have support some from awesome actual basketball players. Not Dwight Howard, though. Um. Okay, one more announcement that we'll make. Just uh, we wanted to get this out uh, before everyone uh, leaves or pops off. Um, our team has been uh, doing a lot of different events, and we're about to hit a season of lots of different conferences, lots of different places that we're flying around to NFT, NYC, you know, all of these like ETH meetups and stuff. So we're actually going to be moving in the lab to once a month. We're going to be doing it on the last Thursday of every month. 
all part of that is so that we can um, make sure we allow more time for more folks on our side to join, but also um, we'll have more content to cover and more information that people can discuss. And it also create kind of a, a bigger opportunity for folks to um, come up and get their questions answered and engage around specific topics. I know uh, even some of the people here in the room who have come every week, it's probably a lot for, for you guys too. So um, we're going to put out like a, a graphic so you can see the schedule, but basically just assume every last Thursday of the month we're going to be doing in the lab. Uh, but in replacement of that, I know HODL is going to be hosting a few more like art or gaming specific topical spaces on Thursdays. I know our community channel is going to be hosting more just kind of like hangouts on spaces. Um, so there's going to be kind of a, other ways of that we're filling in those gaps, but we'll, we'll kind of make in the lab a bigger thing and we're going to do it once a month. So uh, spread the word. We'll, we'll, we'll post about this as well so folks can see it, but we're going to be moving in the lab to the last Thursday of every month. Uh, it's been amazing to do this weekly for the last probably year and three months, but um, we see that there's just so much going on. And even the hour that we're all sitting here, there's like probably 10 different crazy things that have happened. So, um, yeah, we'll, we'll concentrate it into to doing it once a month. I'm going to yeah, bring up. Yeah. Do, do I get to, do I get to steal the in the lab branding? Can I, can it be like in the lab Dude. colon arts yes. and culture? Yes. Or like a CSI it. series. <laughs> yeah. CSI Miami, CSI New York. Okay, great. We're going to have to come up with a name. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there's going to be now a million of those and yeah, it's going to be like in the lab, New York, in the lab, Chicago. Like, <laughs> yeah. We're, yeah, absolutely. Take it, run with it. Uh, Zesh.io, you're up. What's going on? Hey, guys. <clears throat> Usually, Hello. I join with, uh, my account with Martoxan. I'm Mars Martoxan, the founder of Zesh. It's an end-to-end -end community building platform. Actually, in a few days, I will be a speaker at uh, Crypto Expo Europe, uh, and we will talk about uh, our project and uh, community building. And I wanted to ask you guys, uh, what did you notice in the last few weeks? Uh, is there any inflow of uh, new users into Avalanche ecosystem or in general into crypto? Have you seen uh, an increase in uh, activity inside of uh, Avalanche projects so far? Yeah, yeah, I can speak to that. And there's a couple areas that I think I've seen some amazing growth. Obviously, um, we're seeing a lot of growth in the NFT community. We're seeing a lot of really cool projects come to life, but also ones that have maybe launched last year or in the last couple of months, continuing to build cool products or experiences, hosts, events, uh, cookouts, barbecues, all these other things that are happening. I think it's really cool that you're seeing just kind of like a, a stickiness to those communities. Um, so that's one way. I think gaming is a huge influx that we're seeing coming in with things like shrapnel hosting thousands of people during their play tests where i don't know if you guys saw it but you could open up like twitch and the whole home page was all shrapnel streams so on the first day um you're seeing like the avalanche game nights and discord hosted by Cozyverse. like there's like all these really cool ways that you're actually seeing people come and stay and have a good time uh one other way i think is really interesting is the number of validators on the network is growing exponentially really fast. And I think a lot of that's thanks to like partners like GoRipple and Banky who are helping um, find new ways to spin up those validators. But I think, I want to say November, it was like 1,500. I think it's at like 19 something now. So beyond just users, like people coming in and wanting to help secure the network and, and be like official validators, I think is like another way we're seeing a lot of growth. Um, and I think, you know, crypto overall, you're seeing, you're seeing that as well. But especially on Avalanche, I think a lot of these community-led efforts, whether that be like in the art space or gaming. Um, yeah, we're seeing a lot of uh, expansion and growth there. Um, in the DeFi space, for sure, like Struct is uh, there, like usage and TBL is going up a lot. Stay cut that we just launched is having some exponential growth. So yeah, we're seeing a lot of places across the network. And, and I think that's uh, a, lot, a lot due to the folks here in this room that are spreading a good word or, or coming on these spaces for the first time to hear more about it. Uh, so yeah, I hope that answers your question. Yeah, it's a, it's a great answer. Um, I just want to point out that official validators and builders uh, are actually uh, the community on the projects and the tech side. So I have been in most spaces where everyone was focusing too much on the building part 
it's amazing we needed that however in my mind is who will use all those projects all those uh, uh, amazing all, all those amazing games because for now we are a limited number of users in the web free space and we need to onboard much more web to users into web free communities and there is a 30x increased potential uh, to do that and i think we should start focusing how to build uh, an easier onboarding not just through third party party platforms like us, but also each platform should do it as easy as possible in terms of interface and how users can onboard into their communities. Yeah, yeah, I 100% agree with that. Yeah, we, we saw a year or two uh, during the bear market of infrastructure, 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 build the projects, build the tools, build the tech, which is great. And I think the tech has matured a lot in that time. But now, we're really focused on opportunities for users to come in. The ambassador program is a perfect example of that. Like hosting in real life meetups that are not necessarily like tech workshops or hackathons. They're just like, this is what you could know. I know uh, ATX style has been doing that a lot. The Portland group, they've been doing that a lot where it's just like introducing the very basics of blockchain to new people. I think that's a huge avenue that this can happen. I think gaming is going to be a huge portal for this. You're seeing a lot of people that, they're not necessarily traders or speculators, but they love good games, and they're seeing the power of of some of these elements like ownership and and uh, and the other ways that that Web three can help amplify games. So, gaming huge huge opportunity for that too. So, I echo your sentiment there. I I agree too. I, I it's funny we were just talking about this in a spaces I was on this morning with Hack Research, their uh, uh, Vietnamese group, and we had Laura, who's our head of Vietnam translating. Um, but they, we were talking about how the tech is is the bare minimum, right? It has to be fast. It has to work. None of that is a differentiator anymore. And, and really what's going to bring people is is intellectual property, IP. You know, it's it's good stories and being part of cool groups. You know, we were talking about it in the, the context of NFTs, but I think it applies across gaming and, and, and everything. Is like, what's the story that's going to bring people in? Um, and I, you know, I always frame this in, in old entertainment terms of like, you know, HBO started as this pay cable channel and they didn't build their audience based on immediately, you know, putting out original content that people loved. They borrowed great IP by, you know, licensing movies and people signed up for the service and, and watched it. And then eventually they kind of introduced their own thing. So uh, just a just a point that people are attracted to good stories, good, pr good properties. And that's what's really going to bring the user base. And it's not always going to be about the tech story. So I agree with you, Zesh, 100%. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we see this in, in, across various ecosystems too. Like look at what Pudgy Penguins is doing. Like Walmart just ordered millions and millions of more Pudgy toys. And like those people buying it may not really care that much about all the inf intricacies of what's happening on chain, but they're, they're getting collectibles. They're getting digital ownership rights to, to other experiences and just more and more things like that. Um, I think are going to be good for the whole space. Uh, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Just take in mind that uh, cool games uh, and NFTs uh, are uh, often just a trend and will pass and new games and the new NFTs that are cooler and um, are trending will uh, take over. So I think it's important to find uh, a solution how to have a retention because I think this is one of the biggest problems uh, that we face today in uh, building a loyal community and a joining community to, to find uh, solutions that can offer us a retention of the users. Because some things like um, doing some uh, uh, competitions and so on can work, especially for the uh, gaming community. Because let's face it, gaming community is much easier to build uh, and uh, retain. Uh, however, how do you identify those power users uh, and keep them active inside your community? Can you fill me in with uh, more details about, for example, the ambassador program you have and what solution are you using today to, to have a better retention? I'm just wondering uh, if uh, we can yeah. about this topic. Yeah, yeah. I mean, ambassador program, you know, we talked a lot about it already. Uh, that's, that's one way to do it where, you know, really trying to bring folks into the fold and like reward people that are like, active and are helping to bring in other users and they're doing the things and, and 
not just focusing solely on a few entities that are responsible for bringing in new users. It's like identifying those that are doing a great job of evangelizing Avalanche and rewarding them and supporting them. And that's through like funding for events and think about like, you know, uh, I don't know if you saw it, but you could, I'll show you some more information, but the Avalanche gaming Fortnite tournament that happened, uh, I think it was like a week or two ago, huge, huge, uh, participation there for people that were just wanted to play a game. It's not, not a game on Avalanche, but just to, to bring the community together to have a good time, right? Like you're seeing this in, in various NFT communities. But you're absolutely right. Like, you know, there's there's things that come and go, but I think a lot of this is becoming more and more sticky as uh, people are finding ways to develop these kind of pockets in these communities in certain areas so that even if you've come because of one game, you're staying because you're having a good time with the new friends that you've met too. So um, and then I think uh, on the flip side of that, things like Core, for example, or other wallets are uh, making just the onboarding process much, much smoother. Like, for, you know, Core has a seedless login. So if you're kind of a new user that's not, you know, necessarily putting a ton of funds into your wallet and you want to just not worry about a private key recovery, you can sign up with your Gmail and you can have a much easier onboarding experience just to open a wallet. Uh, that's just one example of ways that I think um, a lot of different service providers and different projects are making the process easier. So for those that do discover it for the first time and decide they want to not just sit on a centralized exchange, there's it's not as complicated as it was two, three years ago. And I think a lot of the folks here that have been around for a while can attest to that. So hope that answers your questions. And uh, yeah, on board with what you're saying. And I think there's a lot, a lot to be done. And at the end of the day, we're still early. There's still lots, lots, lots of time to go. And that's why we have these spaces like this. So we can uh, help people just understand a little bit more each day. Sure. I hope uh, it's uh, not uh, overwhelming for some users and they wanted to uh, listen about other topics. However, I have uh, I had these discussions uh, with so many people and projects. Uh, and uh, the problem is, how do you identify the users that bring uh, value in Discord and Telegram? Because at this time, I didn't find any real solution. And this is the reason why we are building uh, Zash. Because I agree, the current uh, apps and uh, tools that we have can help us boost uh, the numbers. But that's it. Because very limitation, it makes almost impossible to build a genuine and healthy community. Because they don't measure any qualitative data, first of all. And they are not able to track the users past their initial interaction. So let me give you an example. Let's say uh, you have an amazing uh, NFT project on Avalanche, right? Uh, you are trying to create a little hype around your project and you want to, to make them green on uh, your Discord. And you say, okay, uh, let's uh, make a competition and uh, we give uh, 100 uh, white lists to those who invite more people into my... Um, into my Discord. Okay, the competition begins. I go with $5, I invite 1,000 people or whatever, and I win a whitelist, but maybe others are trying to, to green for, uh, for real. But there is no real tool to, to see what people are doing on Discord and Telegram and to identify those genuine people that brings real value on, inside your community. And I don't want to, to shield uh, Zesh, but I just want to say that this is a real problem that, that's faced by all Web3 projects. doesn't matter if it's crypto or NFT. So if you know any solution, please fill me in, because I have researched this for, for a long time. Yeah, no, that's a great point. Um, yeah, and I appreciate you coming up too. And I think uh, if those are interested in what you're sharing here, go check out uh, their account, Zesh Apps. Um, might be a great, uh, great solution for, for different you know, problem sets that might arise around identifying the best people in different communities. But at the end of the day, I think a lot of it is up to those specific communities to help uh, to help those that are the most active to stay engaged and to reward them in different ways. I'm seeing it across lots of different communities where, um, yeah, people are just supporting those that are the most active and the most uh, willing to share their time and their energy. Uh, yeah, I, I would imagine more and more tools are going to pop up that make this a little bit more process oriented and, and you can find ways to, to use data to see 
who's uh, who's becoming those most active members. And so, yeah, we're looking forward to, to more tools like that popping up. And I think people are figuring out new solutions every day. But again, yeah, you're right that there's a uh, there's more and more opportunity there. And I think uh, the the perfect solution has not been cracked yet. So excited to see what folks build like yourself. Well, we hope to be the next big thing, right? Everyone, <laughs> well, yeah, everyone yeah. says we onboard the next one billion people. Let's see who do it first. <laughs> you know? Yeah. yeah. So not, um, not my favorite. Fact, fr- it's not my favorite phrase in the world because that's just uh, there's so many different nuances to that. But yes, make it easier for each person every day. That's our goal. Yeah, at this time there is no solution, real solution for what I'm talking about because everyone is just focused just on numbers and it's nothing wrong on that to boost your numbers to kickstart your community. However, if you want to build a genuine and healthy community, you have no option and we hope to solve that once and for all. And by the way, just a a quick note, we are still uh, researching uh, a home for our core because we are building uh, with uh, Solidity and uh, EVM and... uh, uh, to be honest, uh, I'm a huge fan of Avalanche, and uh, it was one of the first options that uh, we take it in consideration. And uh, we are still analyzing uh, where where our core is best to be, because, for example, all achievements that will store the all the NFTs, we need to mint NFTs to store all those achievements and SBTs that will be um, correlated to the main. NFT, and the problem is the fees. So we are still researching where, uh, what blockchain can provide us the best infrastructure and the lowest cost to build like hundreds of thousand or maybe million of uh, NFTs and and NFTs to store all those achievements of the users. So I think we can be a key player on any blockchain where we will have our core. Awesome. Yeah, that's that's great. I, I, I love teams that have identified a very specific problem and they're just attacking that head on um and yeah we would love to be the home for for your project so if you haven't yet uh dm us we'll get you in touch with some of our devs or a bd team if you've already talked to them uh great i think hope things are moving along but yeah avalanche would love to to host your project and any other project and uh best of luck to, to what you're building Paulo, did you have something you were saying? oh no i, I was gonna say the best chain is your own chain I was about to show subnets. <laughs> yeah, I mean, for sure. And <laughs> subnet, subnet, more messy than them, like, it's out of the box. Yeah, yeah. You know? However, that was the idea. If we go with Avalanche, that was the proposal from the dev to go with the subnet. So, you yeah. have a good point. Thanks. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Uh, yeah, great discussion, great questions, and uh, absolutely so- things that uh, we hope people are working on. So, appreciate your time. Uh, I think it, we're going to wrap things up right here. I know uh, Holdo and I both have some other spaces to get to, um, one of those being RumbleCon, so hopefully we'll see some of y'all there. But, yeah, final reminders, we're <coughs> going to be moving in the lab to monthly. So if anybody just joined, in the lab's going to be last Thursday of every month. We'll put out uh, some, some graphics around the schedule of that. Uh, and, yeah, feel free to check out the Avalanche Ambassador Dial program and apply for that and we're going to be uh working to build that here soon so follow community of avax to get all the information there and uh yeah stay tuned for some other big things happening and we will uh we will actually let's let's add johnny up here we got we got a minute or two let's just uh welcome our friend up here to say hello what's up johnny good morning guys Uh, good morning uh, what a beautiful day. Uh, real exciting. I just wanted to come up and say uh, good work. Been here a long time. And wow, what a what an amazing year you guys have put together. I'm real excited for the future. And thank you guys because there's a lot going on. You guys are really in tune. And I don't think you see that anywhere else. Proud to be on Avalanche. You know, been here a while. So I love it. Real excited. Yeah, thank you. I wanted to come up Appreciate and say that. Yeah, appreciate it. Beautiful day as always, like you said, and I uh, appreciate that a lot. But, you know, a lot of the credit is due to folks like yourself and people that have been here for a while or even folks that have come in recently and built something cool. And uh, the last thing I'll leave you off with is it's been a great two months so far, but March is going to be crazy. 
like I don't think people are ready for what what's going to be dropping in March. So, uh, yeah, amazing day, amazing week. Let's keep the vibe strong, and uh, we'll see you all in a month on the next in the lab. But uh, Hall here is going to be dropping some uh, gaming and art specific in the lab sessions throughout the next couple weeks. So, yeah, thanks everybody for coming in, hearing us ramble for a little bit, and we uh, we hope you all have a good rest of your week, and uh, hope the vibes stay good.